Another four years at the helm of Spain's government. Pedro Sanchez has been re-elected Prime Minister by the Congress of Deputies. Israel claims to have found evidence Hamas was based at Al-Shifa Hospital, but its military operation there has been condemned by the World Health Organization. Finland closes four of its border crossings with Russia. Helsinki says Moscow is allowing migrants through without documents. David Cameron makes Kyiv and Volodymyr Zelensky his first visit three days after his surprise return to frontline politics as Britain's new foreign secretary. In what she's calling the mother of all reforms, Italy's Giorgia Maloney is pushing for a constitutional change that would allow Italians to directly elect their prime ministers. Backed by 179 lawmakers in the 350-seat lower house of parliament, Spain's acting prime minister Pedro Sánchez has been re-elected and will head the new coalition government for another four years. After failing to win the majority of votes in July's general election, Sánchez finally got the backing of six smaller parties. The socialist leader signed a deal that could secure amnesty for as many as 1,400 activists and politicians involved in the attempt to separate Catalonia from Spain. Your news reporter Jaime Velasquez has more. Pese a haber quedado en segundo lugar en las elecciones, Pedro Sánchez vuelve a demostrar su capacidad de resurgir de las cenizas y labrar grandes alianzas para volver a ser presidente del gobierno. Sánchez es un experto en equilibrios políticos, no en vano, este será su segundo gobierno en minoría, pero sus pactos con los separatistas catalanes y la contestación en las calles por la futura ley de amnistía anticipan una legislatura extremadamente complicada. El gobierno de Sánchez nace con una espada de Damocles sobre su cabeza. Los independentistas catalanes ya han advertido que le dejarán caer si no cumple con su palabra de traer de vuelta a Carlos Cruz de Monte a España y a otros activistas catalanes. No será fácil Pero si algo ha demostrado Pedro Sánchez durante todos estos años es su habilidad para siempre caer de pie. En Madrid, Jaime Velázquez, Euronews. Israel continued its operations inside Gaza's Al Shifa hospital for a second night as it published several videos claiming to show Hamas weapons and equipment found there. But criticism of the storming of the medical complex has grown. There have also been images of its troops taking in medical supplies and baby food. Israel insists it's conducted a targeted and precise operation against Hamas, which it accuses of using the hospital as a command center. Hamas denied the accusations. The World Health Organization says a hospital shouldn't be considered a theater of war. Israel's military incursion into Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza City is totally unacceptable. Hospitals are not battlegrounds. We're extremely worried for the safety of staff and patients. A boost for Palestinian civilians with the first wartime delivery of fuel from outside Gaza. It crossed from Egypt into the southern Gaza Strip at the Rafah border crossing. And on the diplomatic front, there's been a breakthrough as the UN Security Council approves a resolution calling for humanitarian pauses and corridors in war-torn Gaza. It was at the fifth attempt after weeks of bitter negotiations. At least six Israeli troops have been injured in a shooting in the occupied West Bank. The Israeli Defence Forces says three armed men got out of a car that stopped at a checkpoint. The gunmen were all shot dead. The IDF says two of them have been identified as Hamas members. Israeli authorities say they found axes, guns and ammunition inside the car. Police believe the gunmen were planning a large-scale attack. Palestinian media say schools in the area have been closed for safety reasons. Police in Germany have raided 54 properties with possible links to the Islamic centre of Hamburg. The centre is suspected of violating the constitution and supporting the Lebanese armed group Hezbollah. Hezbollah is designated a terrorist organization and has been banned in Germany since 2020. Unsere Sicherheitsbehörden ermitteln gegen das Islamische Zentrum Hamburg und mehrere mögliche Teilorganisationen. 
Wir gehen dem Verdacht nach, dass diese Organisationen sich gegen unsere Verfassungsordnung richten. Außerdem wird geprüft, ob die libanesische Terrororganisation Hisbollah von hier aus unterstützt wird. Local intelligence services have been warning of extremist tendencies detected at the Islamic Center. The operation comes at a sensitive time for Europe's Jewish community, where anti-Semitic attacks have risen due to the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. A lone border guard walking along Finland's frontier, some 200 kilometers from St. Petersburg. Helsinki says it will close four of its eastern border crossings at midnight on Friday. They are located on the boundary with Russia and are external to the European Union. The move comes amid an increase in undocumented asylum seekers and allegations Russian authorities are helping them cross the tightly controlled border. Prime Minister Petteri Orpo says dozens of arrivals, mostly from the Middle East and Africa, have filed for asylum, but without proper paperwork. The Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova says these accusations are unfounded, maintaining Moscow is not obliged to, quote, screen migrants. For decades, Russian and Finnish border authorities worked together to prevent people entering either country without valid visas or passports. A familiar face in a new job, making Kyiv his first overseas destination. Britain's new Foreign Secretary and former Prime Minister David Cameron visited at a time when some of the world's attention has been turned away from Ukraine. But he had a reassuring message for Volodymyr Zelensky. We will continue to give you the moral support, the diplomatic support, the economic support, but above all the military support that you need, not just this year and next year, but for uh, how long it takes. Cameron's Ukrainian counterpart, Dmitry Kuleba, took to social media to acknowledge the UK's track record of support for his country since the full-scale invasion in February 2022. Away from the capital, Russian attacks claimed the lives of one person in Kherson and three in the Donetsk region. Rescuers are still looking for other casualties. Ukraine claimed it had shot down all but two of the 18 drones used by Russia. Russia's Ministry of Defense released images of soldiers firing mortars as it claimed to have downed Ukrainian drones in Bryansk and Crimea. But in the Korsk region, there's been a power cut caused by Ukrainian attacks. She called it the mother of all reforms. Meloni's proposal to let voters directly choose Italy's prime minister is one of the government's most ambitious goals. The aim is to guarantee more stability in a nation where government's coalition lasts only months, even weeks. A few days ago, the cabinet already approved the proposal, but voters will likely have the final say in this. A referendum would take place if two-thirds of lawmakers fail to approve the reform. The first round of vote will take place in the Senate, although a date for the ballot has not yet been decided. This could well be a bumpy road for Giorgia Meloni, leaving many question marks. It's too early to say whether or not she'll be able to count on a solid majority and avoid the referendum. And what could happen should she lose this battle? Former Prime Minister Matteo Renzi went down a similar path almost a decade ago and his referendum on a package of constitutional reforms was voted down, resulting in his sudden resignation. Uh, il percorso che si trova davanti uh, la Presidente Meloni non è facile. Eh, per quale motivo? Perché le reazioni che ci sono state alla presentazione del DDL non sono state eh, di grande entusiasmo, di grande favore, non solo da parte di, di chi si oppone per, per mestiere, diciamo, ma anche da parte di esponenti del centro e di qualcuno del centro-destra. Dobbiamo mettere in cantiere almeno, mh, almeno 18 mesi di discussione intorno a questo testo. According to the latest polls, the majority of Italians seems to agree on the proposed change. And if the reform is approved, this would represent a great success for Meloni. Il successo della riforma rappresenterebbe sicuramente, oltre che il rafforzamento della posizione di, diciamo, di potere della Presidente, un, un, un segnale per l'Europa, per il mondo, sull'Italia. Un'Italia che chiede stabilità dei governi. Ecco, questo 
sicuramente. The direct election of Italy's prime minister would require an overhaul of the current electoral system to avoid last-minute surprises. Meloni's priority is to set a new record and succeed where others have failed, making it easier for national leaders to accomplish their goals. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Rome. Passengers waiting at Berlin's main train station accept no trains are coming. A strike in Germany has severely disrupted rail travel across the country. The 20-hour stoppage was called by train drivers in a dispute over wage increases and working hours. National and local services were reduced by up to 80% in some places. Uns wurde gesagt, dass wir fünfmal umsteigen könnten heute, eventuell, aber mit Risiko. Und wir dachten, Eher nicht, weil wer weiß, was dann passiert. Ja, ob wir ankommen oder ja. It's my huge surprise. I, I came here this morning to take on my train at 6:17, and there was nothing on the display. And I uh, immediately ran into uh, the information center. Uh, people there were so angry, didn't want to assist at all. Ja, ich kann die Forderungen, ich kann schon verstehen, dass sich was verbessern muss. Die Forderungen finde ich überzogen, der Lokführer, aber letzten Endes müssen die Parteien das miteinander verhandeln. Ich finde es ärgerlich, dass wir Reisenden das ausbaden müssen. Negotiations with rail operators were scheduled to resume on Thursday, but are expected to be difficult, with future strikes considered a distinct possibility.